If you're like most people, you focus on doing one thing really well. Well, our next guest isn't like most people. Molly Ringwald does way more than one thing well. Creatively extraordinary, Molly has mastered writing, languages, music, theater, and film. Molly can sing, she can write, and boy, can she act. Starring in movies that define an entire generation, including Pretty in Pink, Sixteen Candles, and The Breakfast Club. Don't you forget about me. Today, Molly is a jazz singer, and she's in Toronto performing tomorrow night at the Richmond Hill Center for the Performing Arts. Forget about me. Please welcome to the CHFI Studios, live with Aaron and Mike, Molly Ringwald. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> I wrote that myself. <laughs> yeah, very nice. Everybody needs an intro like that every morning, huh? Yeah. How about that? Welcome in. Thank you. We're so glad to have you here, Molly. Happy to be here. Oh, fantastic. And what a what a story you've had. We love stories of people who have changed, who have moved with the times or found different sides of themselves to share with the world. And truly, you are a great example of that. Oh, thank you. Thank you. That's really nice. You grew up in a very musical household. I don't know if many people know that mm. about you. They think of you as the child actress who went on to great things. But uh -huh. your dad, I just love <laughs> the quote from your dad, Bob Ringwald, who is a well-known jazz pianist, and he happens to be visually impaired. Mm -hmm. And it is, um, if my music isn't up to your standards, lower your standards. <laughs> I love that. I think that should be our motto. <laughs> That's my dad. Well, That's fantastic. And, and what made me smile, too, is that when you've been uh, performing uh, since you've been very, very young, and uh, you were on uh, stage at a... California State Fair, you're like uh, two and a half, three and a half years old. Three and a half. Three and a half. And yeah. You, and you sing. Singing torch songs, basically. <laughs> well, I, I sing, give me a pig foot and a bottle of beer. That's a great song. <laughs> Keeping it classy. <laughs> yeah. Well, it sounds like these guys. You know, you fit right in here. But, but my, my favorite <laughs> was, yeah, uh, you've been a good old wagon. But Daddy, you, but you done broke down. <laughs> but mm -hmm. you done broke down. Yeah. Bessie, well, I, I really, I wanted to be Bessie Smith when I was a little uh, girl. My, my dad is a traditional jazz musician, so he introduced me to Louis Armstrong and Bessie Smith and that's who I really admired when I was uh, really young and then as I got older I started listening to you know Ella Fitzgerald and really got into the Great American Songbook and then uh, and then got a little distracted by by films and you know by that, the 80s that's where, yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah but that was a, that was a great time <laughs> yeah. for you though yeah and uh, and I, I always wanted to put a, a jazz group together but I just uh, I didn't know when I would actually get to it so it's it's pretty exciting to be able to do that now and you even have covered a little bit of um, as we heard from Breakfast Club, Don't You Forget About Me. That's one of the songs that you do. What else is in your songbook with your trio tomorrow night in Richmond Hill? You know, mostly I do the Great American Songbook. So I have, you know, songs by, you know, Dorothy Fields and Hoagie Carmichael and um, you know, actually Don't You Forget About Me is really the only contemporary song that oh, I do. Really? And uh, you know, and and it was it was kind of special to me. I I we started working on it, you know, right after I, I heard that John Hughes had passed away. So I sort of wanted to do it as a tribute to him on, on the record. You've done a great job of sort of tying in your past and your present with your music and that song. Uh, and, and it's interesting to note that people will come up to you after your shows now and they love your music now and mm -hmm. they want to talk about not only the role that your films played in their lives, but now their children's lives too. Yeah. How is it that a movie like, say, The Breakfast Club is still resonating in the 21st century? Well, I just, I feel like nobody's really been able to do a movie to replace it. You know, mm -hmm. I think it, everybody wants to, but they, you know, I, John Hughes just had something really special and it just, it just really got into the, the psyche of, yeah. you know, and, and it's kind of a, 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 of a touchstone. I think it's, you know, like Catcher in the Rye in a way, you know, when I was making those movies, I was reading J.D. Salinger's Catcher in the Rye and, and, uh, it, it, and that book was written in the late 40s, you know, and, and I was reading it in, you know, 1983, mm -hmm. 82. And I feel like um, the John Hughes films are a little bit like that. They just speak to, you know, a lot of generations. But everybody could relate to all those characters that were all One slightly or another or twisted. All you know, it was they each had their own individual problems. And I guess archetypes. I'm, yeah, yeah, exactly. You know. I mean, it was, it's really the idea that no matter what you go through, what, whatever your personal experience is, there, there is something that connects us all. Mm. And talking kids with, can really yeah talking I'm, with I'm getting really deep you are <laughs> no, that's okay. okay deep for for early in the morning exactly <laughs> we are talking with Molly Ringwald singer writer actress mom tell us the story for people who don't know it about how 
you were the, an inspiration to John Hughes. The the headshot story is, <laughs> is it true? It's iconic. Is it true? Well, I, I assume it's true. He told me. Uh, he he had written, he was actually casting The Breakfast Club locally in Chicago, and over July 4th weekend, he um, he was in his office while everyone was at the party, and he pulled out a headshot of a stack of headshots that, that his agency had given him, and it was my headshot, and so he wrote 16 Candles with my picture as an inspiration. So when it, And then he sent it to the studio, and they loved it, and they wanted to do that first, and so wow. when it came time to cast, he said that he wanted to meet the person that was in the headshot, and that was me. That's crazy. Did you ever get that I photo know. by any chance? Did, did it ever show up, uh, the, the one that he actually wrote on? Um, th- well, he didn't write oh. on the photo. He put it up above oh, his uh, I computer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> that, that was the one. You were the one. Yeah. Now, were there any roles that got away that you wish, oh, I wish I would have taken that for whatever reason, you know, scheduling problems or you just didn't like a movie or a role? You or... know, I was actually, I, I mean, I make a, a point not to have regrets in my life, mm-hmm. but but I had to turn Kermit the Frog down <gasps> in the Muppet movie. What? And yeah, Is I that know. even allowed? I know. It's, it's terrible. <laughs> and I was going to do it and then I had to be out of town and you know my my daughter gives me a re- mommy why did you turn down Kermit the Frog mm. why did you do that uh, you know other than that you know I feel like any role that goes to somebody else it, you know if it's a great movie then it's it's a great movie because that person is in it and so it, it was a part that that I shouldn't have been in and now the role of mom fits you very well too Thank you. Mm-hmm. twins Thank you. as mm-hmm. well as your 10 year old daughter mm-hmm. Matilda now if any of them shows promise in terms of showbiz, Molly, no. what you no. gonna do? <laughs> I, I will gladly support them if uh, you know emotionally support them if um, once they graduate from college. Ah, okay, that's you a know. good answer. Nick Cannon had yeah. the exact same answer in here a week ago. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, you know, I I tell my daughter that she can take acting classes now because I think acting classes mm-hmm. are fantastic for social development. Uh, you know, but I, I don't want my kids to, to be um, in the business at, at that age. Of all your little ones, is anybody showing an aptitude for it? Well, or is my, it too early? My, my daughter, my 10-year-old, is really a, a talented filmmaker. I mean, she does things that <laughs> I, you know, and edits herself. <laughs> no. it's, it's incredible. Yeah, it's pretty incredible. Uh, she has her own YouTube channel under a different name, <laughs> no, so don't bother it's, looking it's for her. Right. Uh, yeah. And she's not allowed to show her face, you know. <laughs> good, good. Um, Protecting but, her. Yeah. Uh, but my my little one actually seems to. Well, my mom says that she's the most like me in terms of uh, in terms of acting. You know, she's very empathetic and mm-hmm. can take the temperature of a room, and mm-hmm. her, you know, really strong emotional EQ. You know, all, all of my kids are totally different and, and all brilliant in their own ways. How did you come out of your teen years as a star, a movie star, so unscathed? <laughs> How did you do it, Molly? Um, I think books. Oh, yeah, I really yeah. I really think that, you know, I, I've been a reader since I was really young, and I, I think it, it just gave me a, a, a perspective um, that you don't have when you don't read. I mean, when you're a real reader, I think you, it, it just gives you... A perspective on the rest of the world and kind of takes you out of the microcosm that is that is Hollywood. So, and I also had great parents, and uh, and I suppose I have a very strong survival instinct that helps. It has served you well, and look at you now, jazz singer. Happy birthday, by the way! It was on this day a year ago. Your album came out. That's right, April 9th. Oh wow! Except Thank you. Sometimes well, you're very welcome. <laughs> it's Pink Day too. It is. It's International Anti-bullying. Pink Day. Yeah. yeah. So Isn't that see, it all ties yes, in. Yes. Yes. And Aaron wore pink today, I so uh, I'm I, I have pink, but it's underneath. But I'm still <laughs> I wore it because you're here. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Thank you. <laughs> well, good luck to you. Break a leg tomorrow night with your trio in Richmond Hill, and uh, we are going to be sure to put that up the richmond hill center for the performing arts on our chfi.com website and our facebook page so people can get tickets and go tomorrow night and just enjoy this next chapter in your life share it with you. you thank you very much